Hi, everybody. So I have a wonderful guest on my show. His name is Ricardo, and he is an ESFJ. Uh, we're going to talk about the eight functions of the ESFJ and how they manifest in in the type. At least, like, let's let's look at Ricardo's experience here. And Ricardo is not only a a teacher; he's also a really talented astrologer as well. Be sure to check out his YouTube channel. Astro Boy Ricardo. I have a link to that uh, channel down below in the des description box. So welcome, welcome, Ricardo. Thank you. Thank you so much for having me. Hey guys, if you find yourself getting stuck with really difficult emotions, I have created a video about how you get from inner emotional pain to inner peace in five steps. If you want to check out that video, I have a link to that video down below in the description box. And also up above, as well. Okay, so let's get started here. Um, I have this really incredible website that goes into a lot of rich detail into how each type expresses all eight of the cognitive functions. It's called World Socioeconomic Society. We'll see how much uh, Ricardo resonates with this website, or you know, maybe there's some, some things he uh, does not resonate with, and that's totally fine too. Sounds good. I just like notice the smiles, like all the <laughs> the ESFJs. Do you see their smiles? There's just like very, very bright and and shining smiles here. Yeah, yeah, I noticed yeah. that too. <laughs> yeah, I don't like with Will Sosa and Sosa. I don't necessarily agree with all like their typings, but like just seeing like just the, the level of smiling here, I just think yeah, <laughs> a lot of these are people here are ESFJs. I feel like ESFJs are so like smiley like it's like their whole entire face smiles it's almost like they they're stretching their whole face to smile you know <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah so let's start with this um so ESFJ is called the hosts and the first part here is called emotions emotions is also known as expert feeling so it says here Extra uh, ESFJs are natural optimists with a bright, light-hearted, and vivacious emotionality when they readily express and communicate to others. More than anything, they're driven by a desire to lift the mood of those around them, creating a love of life and sense of fun. So they spend and dedicate themselves towards the emotional well-being of others with a warm sense of humor, easily making others laugh or feel better about themselves while filling up the room with positive energy. Your thoughts about that? Yeah, that's that's very true, and I'm not tr I'm not trying to say this in a very, um, I guess, objective way. But I like to walk in a room and just kind of sense how things are going, mm -hmm. and I try not to match the mood with my face. For some reason, when I'm just quiet or listening, I'm my my face is just naturally like, or I'm just like I don't know why I do this, but I'm never like frowning or upset, mm -hmm. and. I like to make sure that I can even sense when a room is starting to feel like it's just something wrong. And right. it's, it's very, so I like to keep everything stabilized and in harmony. And right. I can't help it. I wish I could turn it off sometimes and just not care. But uh -huh. I do. I just notice things. Like when I walk in a room with people, especially, it's like, you know, the Sims, these things pop up in their heads. Not that I see them, but I can just feel it. So it's a very strange, happy thing. That's that's so cool. That's really um, amazing um, trait to have. I think uh, a lot of people do very much benefit from it. It's good to have like someone to lead with uh, positivity, right? I know you also mentioned sometimes you don't feel that way, right? And then yeah. people approach you. I mean, I heard that saying like if you smile, people approach you, right? And then yes, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like sometimes I'll just be sitting down, or like when I used to take the TTC or the bus, I'll just be sitting down, like kind of smiling like this. And some people will start talking, but I don't feel like talking to the person. But like, oh, hi. That's why we always get called as like fake or superficial. We're not trying to be. We just don't want to be rude about it. And, you know, I just don't want to come across as, you know, a person that's trying to disturb the peace. So I just kind of play along with it with my FE. Right. Uh, understandable. Uh, well, um, extra feelings is also like um, very expressive function in general so like esfjs could be expressive like if they have some sort of negative emotion too at times oh, like yeah. i know like in a way how would you describe how that's expressed well for example just with the positive part i'm always talking with my hands no matter what i do i'm just constantly 
I don't know. I sometimes just want to sit on my hands and just stop doing it, but I can't. But with negative emotions, it's almost like I I don't express it in in my face, but I express it in my words. Because with my SI, I'm very strong with the words that I use. So I'll say, that was unacceptable. I really didn't like the way you said this. And you'll know when I'm not pleased with something, but it comes across as acceptable. It's not like, well, that was rude. It's more like, oh, he's he didn't like that. And sometimes I might come across as not intimidating, but just, whoa, where did that come from? We are such a nice guy. I didn't expect that. Got it. Okay. Thank, yeah. thank, thanks for sharing that. So where are we here? So naturally outgoing and gregarious with an earthy charisma, they can be the life of the party and the epicenter of many a social occasion, being at their best in a role of presenter, entertainer, and host. They enjoy organizing celebrations, bringing people together, ensuring everyone's having a good time. As such, they tend to be very welcoming, uh, inviting all the people to share in their happiness. They are trying to create and doing what they can to encourage enthusiastic participation. That sounds mostly true. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I don't, I don't initiate. I, I find myself as I get older, I don't initiate parties and say, "Hey, I have a party, come over." I find like the ESTP is more doing this. But if I have to, like, let's say somebody says, "Ricardo, take care of the food," I'm like, "Got it," and I'm just like preparing everything, making sure everyone's fed. So I kind of have to be led by somebody for me to get into this mode. I don't kind of like naturally just start it. According yeah. to Linda Barrett, I'm more of like the, I guess, not charting the course, but yeah, kind of like going with the flow, getting things started kind of a guy. I see. That's yeah. interesting. So yeah, so you mentioned as a getting things going person. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, ESTP. It's kind of like almost like an EJ in a way, kind of like yeah. Like I know I look at a lot of ESTPs and ESTJs in this in the school board. They're the ones that says we need to get this started. And I'm like, all right, I'll get it started. <laughs> so it's a, it's a very strange. It works very well, but yeah, you get me going and I get started. I just have to know what I'm doing first. Well, that's probably like a lot of ESTPs and ESFJs like each other. Yeah, I know <laughs> a lot of my father's an ESTP, so we get along very well when it comes to shooting ideas. But once he says something that's like, whoa, 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 slow down, or he goes to me and says, okay, you're so sensitive, that's where we kind of part ways. Uh, I see. Right. Yeah. One thing is, um, yeah, I remember looking, looking at Yusuf J in a party, and <laughs> he looks like he's taking on a lot of responsibility. He's always like going around, <laughs> like helping people and cleaning things up and everything. Like yes. That. <laughs> that's me to the T. I'm like, I will say things like, okay, we're, we're running out of sandwiches, or we don't have any more drinks, or we're going to be thirsty. It's not even my problem. It's the people's problems. And then at the end of the day or the party, I'm just like, oh, I'm hungry. I forgot to eat. Or I am so tired. I need to just go home. And I totally forget about my personal. I even forget to use the washroom sometimes. Mm. It's so bad. <laughs> wow. So you're, you're busy focused on others. Yeah. It's, 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 it's too much sometimes. Okay. We're going to get into sensing. But like one thing I noticed like when you talk about feeling, it's almost like an intuition onto itself. Right? Yeah. So, yeah. 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 It's true. Yeah. Because FE is, compared to FI, FI seems very like self, I don't know what the word is, but very self-centric, while FE is very like people-centric. It's almost like I have this sense of seeing everybody else and all of their moods, but I don't see my own. And it's because you know like how the FIs will just know I don't like this. I'm getting out of here. But even if I don't like doing it, I'd be like, okay, these people, they like it. I'll sacrifice and play the martyr and just kind of like <laughs> do whatever they want. Yeah, it's, and I get in so much trouble for doing this because I'm either too nice, I'm too overprotective, too overbearing, or just too much. Like the people that are not um, optimists, they can't stand me. They're like, you're smiling too much. You need to just simmer down i'm like i'm not doing anything wrong i'm just like this so. mm -hmm. Un understood yeah you're just being yeah. yourself yeah yeah um, i can't help it so let's go to census the census represents um introvert sensing the emotionality of esfjs is flavored by appreciation of the present moment and desire to refine the quality of how people feel reducing darker more negative emotions in exchange for positive life-affirming joy in event or performance planning they are often known for the earnest care and attention to detail they put into such work wanting to create the perfectly blissful experience for everyone 
Uh, they can put a lot of attention into aesthetic of their appearance, wanting to look as welcoming. You have your uh, Calvin Klein shirt there. <laughs> <laughs> uh, friendly and attractive as possible as they are enjoyable to be around. Sometimes this means the means of creating happiness is through the satisfaction of physical comforts. And here they will be eager to assist coming close to smothering their guests with attention to their needs and the relentless provision of food and drink. In these ways, they use sensory anchors to help build and support a convivial atmosphere. So true. So true. For me, a good time is like eating sushi buffet, having wine after, and just chilling. You know, that, for me, that's like, you take me out on that kind of a date or outing, I'm very, very happy. And it's true, before I met up with you, I made sure I looked presentable. I'm all about the senses. Very like, I guess the word, the word is sensate. I like to just mm -hmm. make sure I feel good and you feel good. I like chocolate, things that taste good, things that feel good. The guilty as charged. <laughs> <laughs> what, what draws you to these things? I don't know, because once I, I have an experience of something, I know whether it feels, it's all about the sense of feels, tastes, looks, sounds, or if, if it feels good, I'm going to do it again. And I look for it. And I, there was one time I was super overweight, like 80 pounds overweight. I know it's probably you can't see right now, but I just love food so much that it went to extreme. So I can, it can get very indulgent with these things, or I would start collecting things for no reason because of the satisfaction of having it, knowing it's there, and it just makes me feel good. So there mm -hmm. is a danger of, with the sensing thing, the over-sensory, I would say. I see. Okay. Uh, that, yeah. that makes a lot of sense. There's something about this description I feel like it's missing. Uh, the Kind of like the aspect of introvert sensing that is memory, right? You, we kind of, I think we talked before, you kind of have a spider sense because you pick up on a lot of details and you, you could go back and recall what those details are about people. Exactly. Exactly. Like I will remember things as way back as I was five years old. Like maybe not the timeline or what year, or what date was, but I can go back. If I close my eyes, I can, I can be myself with the same feelings, emotions of, of what, I, what I did when I was five years old. It's a very strange thing. And I wish I could turn it off with negative things, but positive things bring it on. I could just daydream about those things all day if I could. What helps you to get like a sense of people? Because my mom's uh, ESFJ, right? And I feel like she has some sort of sense of people. Like she can kind of like look at people and kind of know how they're like, I guess. Yeah, that's a very good question. And I thought about this many times. It's almost like a combination of first impressions, the way they present themselves from the beginning and the way they speak. I hate it and I wish I wasn't as superficial, but first impressions mm -hmm. have mean a lot to me. So I will match their energy. Then it stores. I think of my memory as like, it's not, a, it's not a hard drive, but it's like RAM. So it kind of like fills up. And then once at the end of the day, it's gone. It just deletes itself. And mysteriously, when I meet the person, suddenly the RAM comes back. I don't know. I'm talking kind of nerdy techie terms here. Then I remember, oh, it's this guy. And you have a vibe. My FE has this FESI combination vibe. I kind of like have memory of people templates in me. So let's say I met this guy who was like you. So I need, I meet another person and think he's just like Leon and I will just treat, treat him like the way I talk to you. It's very strange. I don't know if that makes any sense, but instead of memorizing things and objects, it's people. Wow. That's, that's like, that's really fascinating. And that, that's what leads to that kind of spider sense. So it's like, I, I have seen this before. Yeah. Yeah. And it's not even seen. I felt, I felt this before and I know this, I know this, it's, I'm not, not sure if it's a feeling. It's an intuition, I would say. Right. Yeah. Wonderful. Okay. So let's go to the next thing here. Uh, pragmatism. So this is interesting because, again, this is about the eight functions of every type. And in this case, we're talking about expert thinking. We'll get, we'll get to introvert thinking later. I know that's like uh, that's the fourth function of the ESFJ, but let's first talk about expert thinking here. Uh, ESFJs, they tend to involve themselves in many projects and often with their enthusiasm are, are given much responsibility. I think it was it the ESCPs give you those responsibilities. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> For this reason, they recognize that, the, that to not let people down, they need to be productive and confident in organizing events, ensuring things operate well in their projects. 
They tend to possess a passionate work ethic and when needed, will learn and improve their abilities in relevant areas and their commitments. Right. Yeah. I find myself more of like, um, because there's like TEs that are very manager type. They like to, these are the things we got to do and go. But I'm more of like, okay, let's build upon this. Let's have these ideas and let's build upon it. So I find like myself more of a holistic approach of things, not so analytical. So Mm -hmm. I, if I'm given a job to do, I'm very all about how can we build on this and make it more. And it's funny because when I work with ESTJs, they love working with me because they shoot out ideas and I kind of stack it up and build it. So they're like, that's great. And go. And I'm like, all right. And I just start going. And then I will let them know, well, this didn't work. This didn't work. And I have like this Jenga stack of ideas that I'm presenting, that I'm building upon while I guess the TE dominance ha- are p- are giving me the Jenga pieces, and I'm just putting it together. <laughs> I like I I like how you mentioned because I think like feeling is not given a lot enough credit. Those feelings people often talk about feeling in terms of involving human interaction or understanding people, but it's like a way of knowing things too, as well. Yeah. As, it's holistic. It's, it's yeah, it's not like an organic approach. Exactly. Like, I think I, I take everything in a very holistic approach, I find. And like, you give me math questions, you give me, like, all these things that involve science, and that, my brain doesn't go there. But you give me, like, a holistic approach, I get it. Especially when it helps people, and it's people-centric, I know what to do with those things. Yeah. That's, that's really cool. In this way, they can put on a serious face, sweat the facts necessary to keep things running, and match their affairs with passing competence. If familiar with the tasks they need to do, others may even come to rely on them for their managerial capacity. This is a perfect example. So I work in a school board as a teacher working with children with special needs. I have a great way of FESIing all of their behaviors. So when something happens, I see a pattern. I'm like, oh, he's about to have a tantrum. Or, oh, I see this pattern. He's just, he's going to have a meltdown. And most, most, I would say 90% of the time, I can predict whether someone's about to be triggered by something. So mm. that's how I like to build these these mental FESI templates in my mind. And I love working with these children because they feel great that I understand them, that I validate what they're going through while I'm registering and managing or building upon something or a template that can be good for them the next time. Wow. Yeah. Wonderful. Yeah. I, Thank you. It's so cool that like, your work comes so naturally to you. So I think it is. Yeah. So like, it sounds like you're like really passionate about the work that you do and, and, and your job. And it seems like it works with your personality, but also just as who you are. Mm -hmm. But don't get me wrong. There are some days when it doesn't work. I'm just like confused why this person is just, the the student is screaming and angry and inconsolable. That's where the harmony, because we love stabilizing harmony when there's, this harmony and it's very unstable. I'm like, okay, tapping out. You need to go. I need to like, I'm all people down. I need to TI and just spend time thinking what the heck just happened. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> However, the priority is not how efficiently the process is working, but how people are positively affected by the process. Sustained demands to absorb seasonal facts and prove their working processes can be a strain over time. When explaining things to others, they tend to focus less on the dry factual accuracy of what is being said, but instead what want to bring their stories to life, which may require some hyperbole, hyperbole or exaggeration. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> that makes complete sense. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So I think those extra feelers, they, they um, prioritize making things come to life like kind of like the heart behind it. So let's go to time. So time represents introvert intuition. So ESFJs, they prioritize the excitement and enjoyment of the mood in the here and now. As such, they can be blind to the far-reaching, longer-term outcomes of their enthusiasm. They are unlikely to dwell on the past and find it very difficult to interpret future developments being naturally grounded and present and inclined to take each day as it comes. Yeah, that's very true. I I mean, I'm very good at coming up with ideas, like any stuff. But when it comes to like the overall picture, this is where I suck. Because, for example, my parents will see a pattern. They're like, okay, you're going to do this. Then you're going to end up doing this. And I'll be like, no, it's not going to happen. But it's very true. Like, I, I just don't see 
the NI big picture things because there's like the visionary style and there's the oracle style. And I am not, I'm neither. I'm not very like, I can see myself in the future doing this or I envision myself. I don't because I like to stick to the present. I really, really do. When people talk about what do you want to do in 10 years? I'm like, I don't know. I don't even know what to do tomorrow. <laughs> yeah. So I don't really like to talk about those things unless it really means something important like work-wise or a goal that I want to get into. Then I will put emphasize, especially if it involves people and myself. But I really don't think about those things overall. Yeah. Well, the thing is, when it comes to this is the polar function. So that means this is the weakest function of every type and also the least valued. So for yeah. ESFJ, that's intuitive intuition. It's a blind spot. But at the same time, that's also the value of it is actually because you don't value it. So it could be helpful. And I'll give you an example. So I have an ESFJ friend. And one thing is like, I, I tend to like project out into the future and worry a lot about like my my dating life and she's like no just yeah. take things like a day at a time and, and things kind of just like work themselves out and that that makes me feel better to hear that mm -hmm. yes true. Yeah. and that, that's and our downfall like I, for my, my teaching career for example i didn't even know i didn't get into it until later in my life i i wish i really envy those ni dominance that they're able to just see ahead and predict Unlike me, I'm like, well, I like teaching, but I don't think I'm going to be doing teaching. And here I am doing teaching after all. So, yeah, it's such a blind spot. So ask an ESFJ what they see now and what works now. I'll cater to you. But don't ask me what it's going to happen later. I'll come up with a superficial answer like, oh, you'll be fine. And that's that's just probably it. <laughs> <laughs> Great. Additionally, the idea of something being inevitable is alien to ESFJs who tend to hold the view that anything is possible provide they put their heart and soul into making it into a reality. This could put them at loggerheads with skeptics who might say that an idea inspiring their enthusiasm currently is destined to fail. <laughs> this, is so true. this is exactly what my ESCP dad says. He'll be like, oh, you just start something. And then next thing you know, you are like leaving it behind. And I get so defensive about it because I'm like, but I'm passionate about it right now. <laughs> and then literally two months later, I'm like, Okay, you're right. I'm not passionate about it anymore. So I find like the people that are able to predict these things for me, I really value it now than getting so defensive over it. Right. Yeah. Well, this thing, uh, there's also an advantage to this. So extra intuition and intro intuition, they naturally compete. So in a way, ESFJs have like a pure kind of extra intuition because there's no competing intro intuition. They have a certain freedom with it. Yeah, like I can brainstorm things on the spot, but don't ask me to brainstorm things for later. I don't know. I just really don't know. Yeah, another, thing, just yeah. another thing is like uh, ESFJs are really good at making things happen because they're not thinking far in the future. So like if something, there's an idea, then they're like, they're literally going to make it like, okay, that let's work on that idea yeah. right now. I, I, appreci I really appreciate that quality because sometimes I think like I'm going to do this thing and it's going to happen somewhere down there, down the line, please. But then it's just better to kind of just be more actively working on it. Exactly. As a third function, if you're talking about NE, I like to ask it to come sometimes and play along. If my SI is asleep or left me for a bit, i am like, NE, I need your help. And then we just kind of work together like the SpongeBob thing you were talking about and just come up with all these ideas and be like, happy, happy. And then see what works. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Yeah, uh, yeah. I think SpongeBob is a a good example of an ESFJ character. <laughs> it's very true. <laughs> I'll admit it. <laughs> is uh, are there other ESFJ characters you see like on television, or whatever, that you identify with or famous one? ESFJ. Well, I know, for example, if I was to watch a real life person and think that's me, um, Doctor Mike, when he's speaking and he's talking, I can. I, I'm like that is the way I would say things. That's the way I process things. Um, even sometimes Dr. Phil to an extent, but he's not, but not as strong as he does. Also, there was a, a there was one person in, jo in Joyce Meng's, um, it was, his name was Jonathan. I relate to him as well, too. Um, on TV, it's kind of like the whole Hugh Jackman vibe and the, you know, The Rock, Dwayne Johnson. Mm -hmm. I'm very like, hey, how's it going? And I'm, I'm very like, you, you want to hug me? I'll, 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 I'll hang out with you. I'm just kind of chill, go with the flow. Have fun, spend time with you, kind of guy. Got it. Great. So in such situations, they are unlikely to be open to such advice, seeing it as 
uncouth, unwanted pessimism, like when they're hearing like in introvert intuition. In practice, this could mean that ESFJs, despite working hard, find their efforts amounting to nothing years down the line, not forcing the problem before in the ashes of their labors, not understanding how things come to fail. Yeah. You were kind That's of exactly talking about that a bit earlier. Yeah. <laughs> I have two INTJ friends. They just know me so well that they'll be like, yeah, you're not going to follow through. You're just going to do this for like two months. And I hate when they're right, but with their NI vision and NITE, just, they just know me so well too. Like in such a, they've kind of figured out my patterns that they can predict those things for me very well. So I appreciate them. 